Yes, and Mr. President, thank you uh, for staying with us. You didn't leave us. Uh, <laughs> It's a good thing for a host. Uh, but um, let's talk about the, a very important conversation, that is education. On 23rd of January, Kenyans are supposed to take back their children, those who are parents, back to school. What do you think? Um, because junior secondary, grade 7, reports back to their primary schools. When you're thinking about this, what do you envision will be the sort of uh, conversation and activities in that school where you have now primary schools, kids, um, or children, between grade one and six. You have a junior secondary learner, and you also have a standard eight learner, yet the teachers, yes, there's a process to employ, but so far, no one is ready uh, to teach that grade seven as of now. First, to give you the background, uh, as, as I said earlier, you know, education is one of the most precious things that any nation, you know, anywhere, um, uh, places a premium on. Uh, and, and it is especially for Kenya, because the biggest resource that we have as a country is our human capital. Today, our human capital earns us more money than all the, 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 the other tea, coffee, our remittances from Kenyans who work 400 billion plus every year. So, so it tells you the importance of our human capital, number one. Number two, as you've said correctly, every parent, myself included, you think about the education of your child. And therefore, it's a very emotional, it's a very important issue. So um, the change, the transition to CBC, from where I sit, is the correct transition. There, there could have been some missteps. Maybe it was, uh, uh, maybe we should have taken an extra one or two years to make sure that we get the teachers on board, all the other uh, facilities on board, but that's now water under the bridge. That's why it was also a conversation in this election, and I took the decision that for us to get professional advice, let us put together a presidential working party of educationists and other stakeholders. And they have done a good job. They've talked to, uh, they've talked to uh, teachers, they've talked to parents, they've talked to other stakeholders, people who run schools and, and everybody else, and it was unanimous. 86% of 20,000 people that were uh, engaged said they wanted the junior secondary to be uh, near the parents because many of these uh, children are still young, their, their parents need to look, uh, to look after them to make sure that they are fine. And also, it reduces on the cost of education. You know, if you have to take your child to a school, you know, far away, maybe in a boarding school, it costs more. So I think the unanimous decision was made, and I, and I believe that that is the correct uh, decision. We also agreed that that transition is going to happen uh, for all our children, you know, that, that uh, are in grade six, they will all transit to, because we still insist on the 100% transition. Mm -hmm. They will move to junior secondary. And as government, we took the decision that we are going to hire an extra 30,000 teachers, the largest ever, uh, to make sure that that transition is not only smooth. And next year, we're going to hire another 30,000 teachers just because of budgetary reasons, to make sure that our education is seamless. Um, that uh, presidential working party, I also tasked them, not just to look at CBC, but to look at our Tibet institutions, to look at our university institutions, the whole education sector, because that is the sector that makes Kenya what it is, right? So apart from the uh, transition and the CBC, uh, the which will, has been my pet project, and I pushed it ever since I was Minister for Higher Education, slowed down the last four years because of politics, you know? But now, we're going to hire another 2,000 tutors uh, uh, this January to make sure that we are up to date with the skills mm -hmm. and competencies that are being taught in our Tibet institutions, especially 
those focusing on engineering because that's the direction we are going. All right, before we get and to Tibet, Mr. President, let me take you back uh, to the uh, Presidential Working Party on Education Reform. They are uh, recommending that grade seven, eight, and nine be domiciled within the primary school setup. Now, you mentioned that the Teacher Service Commission has advertised 30,000 positions, and these include interns and those permanent um, and pensionable as well. But does this address the gap? Because this would mean then that we need more teachers to address the gap within primary school that we may need to address the transition to secondary schools. Do these 30,000 teachers fit to address this transition to both primary and secondary school? Absolutely. In fact, the Teacher Service Commission are the professionals. We, we give them the latitude to decide how many of the teachers will help in the transition to junior secondary, how many of the teachers will assist in the continuing uh, secondary education, and how many of them will go to uh, will go to will go to primary? So that is the decision of professionals, and it is the the, the expertise that we have in the teacher service commission is able to tell us where the numbers are. Of course, we could do with a lot more teachers, and that is why I'm saying phase one we're going to hire 30,000. Next year we're going to hire, and progressively, as we committed ourselves in our manifesto. By year five, we will have hired 110,000 additional teachers. A very important transition. To make sure that uh, that whole transition metrics goes on. Mr. President, a very important pr uh, transition beat for the class seven. And of course, the report on ground is that when the uh, government will be hiring teachers, like one teacher for every class seven class, you know, class, of course, this is a big transition. How then will they manage 14 subjects for these very students? understanding very well the specialization angle. Of course, you know, the resources will be shared, you know, uh, between the secondary schools that exist at the moment. We are also going to work with, we have teachers who have already uh, graduated to degree level who are teaching in the primary. Mm -hmm. We are going to uh, uh, identify those teachers to come and support the junior secondary transition. Mm -hmm. So the, we have sat down for long hours with TSC. They have mapped out how many teachers are diploma teachers who are teaching in primary, mm -hmm. how many are graduate teachers who are teaching in primary, who can now support the junior secondary. How many can we transition this way, that way? And how many, what can we do to make sure that we leverage on the employment that's going to happen next year? So all that is mapped out because it is important for us to provide a transition for all our children and ground our education properly. And as I speak to that point, allow me just to speak about our university education. Part of what we have informed the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform is to make sure that they give us the correct recommendation because our position is that we should be able to, sort, to um, create a merger between the Tibet funding uh, board, the university funding, uh, funding board, the higher education loans board, because all these boards are putting students in this university. They are putting students in that college. This one is organizing bursary and nobody is talking to nobody. We need a system that ensures that we are taking so many students to college X. That's why we are giving them so much money. And that's why we are allocating much bursary so that our education is grounded on sound economics. As we talk now, most of our universities are bankrupt. Egerton University, one of our universities, the CEO has been taken to court, is almost in jail. You know, and the reason is we are giving between 52 and 55% of the requirements of our universities. It is time we sat down and uh, um, assigned all our universities, the students that we have the capacity to fund and to give bursary.